So boom, I wasn't gonna hop straight into this anime. I was gonna wait a little bit because I still had to wrap up all the JJK. But I seen a clip of a certain death in this show and I just started busting out laughing and pretty much was like, yup, that sold me. Gotta go watch it and make a video now. So we're here to cover solo leveling. And like usual, if you haven't seen any other episodes of solo leveling, major spoiler alert ahead. And with that being said, okay, let's go. We begin with Miriam calling in a massive hit on the hunters. And bro pulled up just to get hit stick by an ant. That is tough. So the mages pull up to legit show that they got that heat on them. Just for these ants to run through that shit like they Jerome Bettis. And I'm thinking to myself, these mages could have been ended this shit if they just conjured up some raid and, you know, sprayed it just like how they sprayed that nut ass flame that they just shot out. But to each his own. And at this point, it's not looking really cash money for the gang in them. Until them S tear boys came oh. out and they started treating the ants like how we treat them in real life by one shot in So the Royal Guard ant pulled up to the scene thinking it was about to do something, but that shit was hella short lived because Shaq Diesel literally rips off the ant's fangs and beams that bitch so hard to air out the ant. Shit, that kind of gave me flashbacks to when Toji popped Rico. Anyways, after the Chimera ant arc, we move three years later into the present day to people gearing up and arriving to go into this dungeon. And I need to point something out just real quick. What the fuck is wrong with this man's head? Whoever thought this shit was cool need their ass with. Why does my man's hairdo look like an upside down condom with two extendos on the side of his face? You know what? That's questions we don't need answers to. Finally, our main character has arrived. Sung Jin Woo. Oh shit. If it isn't Sung. Damn, bro must be really legit. <laughs> Oh, young and definitely legit. Legit being the most ass hunter in the world. And there's no cap in old head statement. Sung is really a E rank hunter, like rated E for ass. I know there's no correlation between E and ass, but there's also no correlation between Sung and Hunter. But on the bright side of things, if there's a ranking for Riz, Sung is definitely a B because he has his B rank shawty named Juhi all on his top. And she really fuck with him tough, despite him being the worst of the worst. And I respect her dearly. She is what you call a unicorn because now it Days? You gotta be an S rank just to look at these women. I really do hate it here. I'm about to isekai myself. Hopefully it works. Now everyone's going into the portal to start this dungeon. And the colleague synopsis that we got about Sung Jin Woo, it's looking pretty spot on. Because he's getting worked by this little ass yeah. goblin in this dirty oh. ass yeah. toga. Yeah. So I don't care. Even if I'm E rank, it couldn't be me. Hold up, he charges in for opening hit. Never mind, the Alibaba dagger has broke. But time out. Look at his face when that shit breaks. One more time, one more time. <laughs> and the little green NGA stabs the shit out of him, along with Trojan M pulling up quickly to save Sung's life for Juhi to come over and get the rubbing and tugging on her little boo. And they finally put it into this dungeon at last and clap it up for Jokic, big ass, because he is the sole purpose on why everything is about to be on X Games mode. And he gets everyone's attention. And he's like, hey, niggas and bitches, I think I found another dungeon, which the Night Raiders come to a team vote to advance and tackle this unprecedented area, which I might mention that when new dungeons are found, you Usually the higher ups come to check in to see the grade of the dungeon so that the NPC and bots don't run into some S tier type shit. But well, fuck it, we ball. Anyways, the show skips to this lady getting her shit snatched in broad daylight and the thieves are getting it on this low ass moped for them to hit the corner and run into this chick standing still in the middle of the street. And she not budging or flinching at all to TP on the man. Back to the group of hunters. So they finally pull up into this big ass throne room. And within the room, there's all these statues. Following up with one the size of a perfect Susano. Personally, I played a lot of Destiny 2 dungeons, so I know that this is the focal point of where shit is really about to get wicked. Yup, doors closing on their own and shit. Bitch move. Ooh. All y'all that voted yes can suck my dick because I'm not spending another minute in this bitch. I can't believe I let these nincompoops drag me into this shit. I'll catch y'all on the other side, man. Look out. <laughs> Hey, he was definitely right about one thing, catching them all on the other side. Boy, ain't no way that statue just moved. And in that case, what about this fat ass Megazord? Why <sighs> we're finished. And uh, the statue unloaded the clip and started to rain terror down on all of them. Legit turned this poor person into soot, just frying up the whole field. Got the whole squad on all fours. The aftermath of this shit is pretty bad. Shoot done took the OG's arm and Juhi's in a coma without taking any physical sustained damage. While one of the crash outs just started talking his shit. God gave me this speed for a reason and I refuse to be stagnant in here. So let me put this shit on display for y'all. And he just takes the fuck off. But the statue had other plans of pretty kick this nigga from the server. 
And that is the reason why y'all are watching this video right now. Because bro legit checked out like Crash Bandicoot. You know, when he jumps or stands on TNT and it blows him up and the only thing that's left is his feet on the ground. Poor guy had a video game death. RIP to this brave soul. All he wanted to do was show his God speed, but he sped his death to go see God. Now, Jin Woo might be pure shit, but that IQ low key on a beam 50 because he thinks back to one of the statues holding a tablet with three tasks on it. And the first one was to revere God. Furthermore, he puts one of his theories to the test and stands up. In spite of his head ready to be lined up, he bows his head and drops to the floor with the quickness. That's when the Jimmy Neutron brain blast occurred. Sung was like, yeah, we got to bow down to this big ass statue together with everyone else assuming the position. And the statue hits this devious ass grin, almost the grin that you give when a John goes to tell you to make sure that the door is locked. At this point, everyone's thinking that the coast is clear and that they can get up now with a sigh of relief until the statue got up on his two legs and started walking towards them. Now, with all that short-lived excitement, Sung tells everyone that the next task has to be to praise God. And Van Helsen pops out of nowhere to say, praising is my middle name. I got this. God is good. God. And this is when the carnage actually kicks in. Look, Shardy just accepted her fate and got A Town stomped on. Dude in the green Moncleasy fast was out there dicking it, but wasn't running fast enough because he got split in two like a motherfucking sandwich. And this was this asshole's first and last time on camera. Big Brain Wu comes to the conclusion that they have to stand under a statue with the instrument. And once upon arrival, the statue eyes will glow and it will start playing that shit for you. However, him and Juhi's statue ain't doing anything, which probably means two people can't be there at the same time. So he takes off to go find one for himself. Side note, Juhi just better be making that ass jump for this man after this is all said and done. Because bro almost got stomped out, got a whole big ass shield dropped on him, which resulted in the loss of one of his legs to still crawl out of this gruesome situation and get that victory royale. The last task has begun, proving your faith. And instantly, this man's sword is drawn to the captain's neck. Go ahead, step, Han Solo. I love how he's singling out the captain when this was a group effort on how they all got here in the first place. Nevertheless, someone always has to take the fall for the group, and the captain actually goes out to the middle. Yet, only one flame lit up, so that meant that all of them had to bring their stupid ass on. And once they all got there, the knights activated and started closing in on all of them. Now, this was the true test to see who could stand on business and not fold, because if everyone keeps their eyes on each knight, they won't move with the little enticing main door opening and the remaining hunters are two for two on task so they got this in the bag ah! sorry i got hoop dreams oh nigga ah! And just like that, we only got three people standing. Y'all might as well dip. I only got one leg. And here, take this. I know bad bitches like Chipotle. Chipotle! Oh. And they both were gone like the wind. I feel so bad for Sung because he was the brains behind all this to be the last one left. And the creators really said, fuck being on black. This is night. Considering the fact that these knights are really taking him to Pound Town. But Sung Loki eating all that shit up though. As the fatal blow is about to be dropped upon him, he gets a random noty courage of the week. If he doesn't accept, his heart will stop at 0 0.02 seconds. Like damn bitch, not even 0.1? You can't even form a thought in 0 0.02 seconds. So he ends up hitting that yes button because who wouldn't? For him to randomly wake up in the hospital. As well too, the men in black walking in on him to ask him some questions. But to mainly see if he had a double awakening and if he surpasses that E rank status now. So Sung puts his hand on the mana reader for that shit to only be 10. What a waste of fucking time, this nigga still ass. Turns out Sung has these screens that he can only see, which is giving him a notification to do a daily quest, which are 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and six miles to run. I'm assuming Saitama went through the system too because this was his workout regimen as well. And if Sung fails to do this daily quest, there will be a penalty. But he was like, F this nut ass screen and went to go get some Zs. And when time was up, that boy got teleported to Mars and had a new quest to survive for four hours from this big ass pack-a-punch centipede. And somehow, in some way, he ends up surviving in his part-time shift which teleports him back to the hospital room and with that traumatic experience you best believe he wasn't gonna let that shit happen again therefore the next day he was out there getting it in in addition to him finishing his dailies he gets skill points each time and can put it into various attributes and a common mistake as an rpg noob he dumps all that shit into strength not only that he's gifted daily rewards too which he gets a key for him to unlock a dungeon hence him going over there to get shit popping once entering sung is greeted by the green frisky three and the one in the middle is 
clearly yeah. shown what that mouth do. Dirty ass goblin. Despite that, the goblin tries to slide on <laughs> Sung for the other two to tag in and try to get some work in as well. Yeah, our boy Sung had to turn that shit up for the one time. Charged straight at one of them and stabbed it right in his chest. Popped the other one right in his head. And why why spam the dagger to split the last one in half? Yo, who Sung think he is out here getting saucy with it? Anyways, Metal Mouth Kujo comes flying in to straight up just rushing Sung and attacking him while shattering his dagger in the process. This nigga got to chill with these Alibaba Timu daggers, yo. Like, the shit ain't cutting it. Legit and metaphorically. This girl around, he straights up socks the wolf into a wall. And then starts playing Rock'em Sock'em with Lovejoy. Even though he's putting the Mick Mittens on the wolf, it's not enough to do it in. So he hits the tab button to bring up his inventory and actually pulls out a sword. And peep, he was just holding his own with his bare hands. So what you think he about to do with this sword? Chop that motherfucker right in half with these. And you gotta understand two wrongs don't make a right because two more lichen appeared. So one of them presses Sun just to get put in the dirt once again. And the other lichen was just like, I right, I'm gonna head out. I gotta get the hood for him. Now that Sung had some time to himself, he peeps quickly that Clifford's cousin Clinton done brought the den out and they was finna jumping for the respect of their dead homies. But what do they call it nowadays? Reverse anime jumpings? Well, yeah, Sung was just putting on a clinic, fucking slicing and dicing and just putting all they little red asses in a blender. And he out here thoroughly enjoying it too. The system as well. It even gave him the title Wolf Assassin. After this, this dungeon low key became farming simulator for Sung because he damn there started cooking all the ads within the dungeon itself. Shit found the infinite xp glitch the way he's leveling up now that sung is only getting one xp per kill he comes across this menacing ass staircase that screams boss but he knows that too because he was actually able to add some skill points to the attribute perception as well once getting down there he's instantly launched up against the wall and i know i just said something about perception but as we can see 24 ain't it because if he had a little bit more he would have never got snuck like that anyway sung is face to face with this big ass blue snake quickly it goes for another attack and sung realizes that his scales is about as hard as kd's leg which means that his sword's not going to be able to get through while that the snake goes in for his second lunge but sung is barely able to block and dodge it for it to follow up with the whip of its tail sending our boy sung across the map yo this snake is really treating coconut head right now even throwing a whole fucking goddamn train at him and this is when you know the plot starts to kick in for the mc because sung starts doing that inner talk and he's like i can't believe after all this i'm still ass i can't go out like this just for the snake to be like man fuck your little ass plot armor and even though he just got boomed like shit he starts to have that flashback about all the l's that he has taken so that should do the trick right nope the snake is still fucking him up. But this go around was different. You just felt it in the air that he changed. No matter how many times I fall in this dungeon, you are gonna have to earn this ass whooping. And I knew at this point he was the real deal and that it was over for Manda the snake. So both of them just start going at it. As he's going against the grain of the snake, he starts running on it, jumps and latches on its neck and breaks the snake's armor with his bare fucking hands. And we're gonna use common sense to know what comes next. He uses all 32 skill points and strength to choke out the snake until it's blue in the face. I guess I can't use that because the snake is already blue, but still a figure of speech. And we have a newly claimed solo dungeon victor, as well as him claiming this authentic badass dagger off of stock X. Thank God, none of that Timu bullshit anymore. After Sung finishing up the dungeon, we find this golem in a dungeon break and is now out in the real world. And the Hunter Association has the bottom of the barrel hunters fighting this golem right now because there's no higher rank to take care of the situation. So they have to make of what's due. They even have Juhi's PTSD self on the front lines, not doing anything. And remember, she's a B rank. But at the same time though, she did have to survive a night with the 10 tail statue. So I can see why she's still shaking up. But Sung Jin Woo, he came to the court pulling from the logo because he airs out the last of the Timu dagger to break the golem shield. Literally so that everyone can start hopping the Pokemon. Then they cut the can back to him and his forearm about brolic and shit. And he got that look like, hm, I'm really him for real. I don't know how this is even remotely possible. Ow. Within the time frame of 24 hours, I, I give it 48. But Sung went from literal shit to champagne, burgundy, wine. He even got all the badass nurse drones trying to swallow his shit whole. Bro, check this. Sung trying to slide out from the hospital and the John frantically bowed to get this man's number. Like shit, I got muscles and all I get is niggas trying to get my number to work out. <laughs> Now we cut to Sung back at the crib with it. And even the dude's sister like, bro, what the fuck done got into you? But to interrupt their family time, he gets a call from the landlord. Hello, Sung Big Woo speaking. Big Woo, nigga, where's my bread? 
I'm sorry, sir. I've been going through a lot of personal development, which altered me in getting your money. Bitch, you was an E-ring. And if you don't got my bread by the first, I'm going to show you a real dungeon boss. And that boy went right into looking for higher ranked dungeons for a bigger payout, which landed him a raid with these fucking goobers. And why is we still trusting niggas with faux hawks? You're bound to get yourself into some shit. Besides that, I think his name is Wong Dick Suck. Okay, not that, but it's Wong Dong Suck. Pretty much the same thing. But he's giving the rundown to Sung that they needed two more fillers for the C ranked dungeon and that he needs them to just carry the bags for them the whole time. And they'll break him off his 2 million yen at the end of everything. And everything sound good until he tried to get him to sign on that dotted line because who the fuck still reads the tos which is the perfect way to put some bullshit in and lock a person in along with this other d-rank hunter that somehow got s tear armor but i can tell jin ho's gonna be in the storyline for a little bit so they get in there and quickly make work of the ads that are in the dungeon for one of the dudes to come and realize that a lot of these bugs got big old bite marks in their ass hey, which yep. means that the boss probably has some size to it so they go deeper within the dungeon but sun got his guards up high because of this whole shady ass group they finally get into the boss room and within it is surrounded with a bunch of mana crystals which implies that everyone's about to get that bezos chicken and jen ho being the real one that he is walks over to sun to see his contract real quick and lets the lead captain know look here that these crystals don't count as battle loot so my nigga son will be getting the bread that you promised to him as well as all the crystals that we finna dig up from this dungeon this is a w man's right here already looking out for the cookout we finally get to see the big ass arachnid for us to hear the most dumbest anime excuse ever so the captain tells them that they forgot the tools outside so they have to go back and get them but y'all two can stay back and get to know the boss until we get back bro you mean to tell me Sun couldn't fish out this terrible ass lie, but fucking five episodes ago, as the most assest hunter could decipher three old folklore code. Someone, please make it make sense. And as if we didn't see this coming, the captain switched up like KD and locked them boys into the boss room. And with all that noise going on, comes an awakened dormant spider. But Jen fucking Wu was on straight demon time. He pulled up on the boss like it was game fucking seven. And I honestly give it to solo leveling because they consider know how to bring the hype in even before niggas start pulverizing each other but besides that sung straight up goes guns blazing right at the spider for him to go for the first blow but quickly realizes that the exoskeleton is too hard to cut through so he just goes full throttle and holds the r2 button while spamming that square button as well in the back you got jen held trying to put together what the hell he's even watching right now yeah e for extraordinary what the fuck is the use for this armor shit? I might as well hand it to him. And I mean, he not lying. Bro stuck like Mr. Krabs. As Sun continuously holds R2, his stamina bar is finally depleted. And the spider finally catches him lacking and sends him to the Shadow Realm. What's a video game inventory without having a Phoenix down in it? Which he pops and now he's just miraculously in the air. And it's raining judgment day on the spider and jabs it right in the eye. To just vigorously hacking away at it. Dropping that debuff paralysis or drain each go around. And a little bit after the boss being slain, the Mick assholes come back to see that the two are still alive and they really think that jen ho was the reason why the boss was dead so the captain commands him to turn on sung and kill him or all six of them was gonna lick bow cut for everything that he got but jen ho for sure knew to say no or his heart was gonna stop in 0 0.02 seconds so he posted up right in front of all six of them unpopular opinion jen ho low-key one of the realest side characters i've I ever mean. seen in an anime <laughs> Now they started to walk down on the both of them. And Sung got a notification that he had to put down all six of them. And before he could even close out his noties, Green Archer decided to sneak him while he had the chance. And boy, oh boy, viewer discretion is advised. Because Sung taps into some different ass parallel and comes to the conclusion that he can't keep letting people take advantage of him. And that the weak and the nice will never advance in life. And he rose up on some thriller shit to start barking out his fucking mouth. I see. If the system wants to fuck me, then I'll fuck it too. Pause. Nah, we're gonna keep on going because he low-key spitting. He low-key spitting. My guy, who is you fucking? The weak. The weak are always the one to get their shit snatched. Young boy, you is not thorough. Then you must be ready to get your shit took yourselves, right? News flash, pal. I like the E and effort that you're trying to put in for all of us, but you're the one that's about to get his shit snatched. And this is what happens when you don't take the nigga that's talking to himself serious. So they finally disperse and homeboy started letting bullets fly for him to literally deflect each bullet with his dagger while dodging and stabbing niggas in they shit. And remember, if you get hit with his new little toy, you're going to be out in the field looking like you just ate a Popeye's biscuit because of that paralysis and drain debuff. And it was just honestly crazy to see Sung Jin Woo pick off everyone so effortlessly. And before you even knew it, the Mick assholes were down five in the first quarter. 
quarter. Like, bro, we didn't even make it into the second quarter yet. And Dong Suck really thought this little ass pirate was going to save him from the natural disaster that he was about to be a part of. Mr. Wong, you're pretty strong, but you're not like that. Five try grand palm. I'm not even gonna lie. Straight up, Sung is that nigga. And you had Captain Dickhead being teeth and palms pleading for his life. Three times. Three times you try to kill me. To follow up with a clean decapitation. As the climax finally came to an end, the dungeon started to fall apart because of it coming to a finish. So the two make their way out the dungeon for them to be met by this point Dexter ass girl. For her to get the reports of the dungeon. And she was low-key dick eating on the low. Saying that Jin Ho was probably the reason why they beat the boss. And that Sung was being a bitch ass E-ranker was just hiding the whole time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and on that note, bye.